Hey guys and welcome back. Today we have a little bit of a surprise. If you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, you might have already seen some posts about our new addition. If you didn't know, we are on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at all the places <gasps> at One Tail Four Paws. I went outside the RV just like I always do, just to hang outside a little bit. And right now we are parked in front of a large expanse of woods. And as soon as I walked outside, come running out of the woods, was this itty bitty little kitten, screaming, crying so much, limping and running as fast as he could right up to me. He was clearly very scared and it looked like he had been injured because of the limp on his leg. And we further examined him, he was actually missing a lot of fur around his eye and it looked like it had scabbed up a little bit from being attacked as well as had bite wounds along that leg that he was limping on. In addition to the wounds, he was covered in fleas. While I waited for my husband to get home from work so we could take him to the Humane Society to scan for a chip and see if anybody reported a loss or a cat, I made sure I fed him, I watered him, and I did give him a flea bath just because he was so badly infested. Even after giving him a flea bath, there were still fleas that were like crawling on his face. And we actually had to give him a second flea bath that next morning just to get the last of the fleas off of him. It was so bad. After looking around to make sure that he didn't have any owners, as well as checking multiple online sites and talking to the Humane Society, we ended up holding on to him and ended up taking him to the vet in the next few days. He was still limping on the leg after a day or two, although it was getting better, but we just wanted to make sure everything was okay with him. After taking him to the vet, they scanned for a microchip and both them and the Humane Society both agreed that there are so many stray cats in the area that more than likely he didn't belong to anyone. The vet also confirmed that it looked like he had been attacked at some point, but everything was healing up nicely and because his leg was improving, that there was no need for x-rays. But we did get him his initial shots, got him dewormed, just to make sure that we did everything right for him. The vet also confirmed that he was only around five weeks old, so he was definitely a little guy. Now, while we had no intentions of adding another animal to our RV, we now have two cats. Meet Loki. Loki was named after Marvel's version of Loki, who has always been one of my favorite characters. And it just so happened the day after we found him, when we first started thinking that we might be keeping him, that Disney Plus's new Loki series was actually coming out. Because of his namesake, we chose green to be his like harness and collar colors. So he already has a green collar and a green tag with his name on it. Because he was so small and we found him at just five weeks, we actually couldn't find a kitten collar or kitten harness that would actually fit him. Everything was way too big. So we actually ended up having to get him a ferret collar. So the ferret collar is not a breakaway collar, which I don't recommend for using on your ferrets. We wanted to get him used to collars and harnesses at a younger age, so that way he could become an adventure cat, hopefully. So we wanted to make sure we had something to use. So we only keep this collar on him when he's with us. So anytime we leave or if we're going to sleep, this collar comes off just because it could be a safety hazard. So I actually started using one of the ferret harnesses that I make and sell in our Etsy store on him instead of a cat harness just because it was the only thing that would fit him. Since then, he's actually gotten a little bit bigger and I actually ended up making his own harness. So it's big enough that he can grow into it while we wait till he's big enough that we can actually wear a full size cat harness. And of course I did it in the green and yellow Loki colors just so it still matches. Now the vet did recommend quarantining him from the rest of our pets for at least three weeks to four weeks. So living in an RV, that's not the easiest. But after the quarantine period, we were able to let him actually interact with the rest of our pets. I didn't want to tell everybody super soon that we were keeping him because one, we had to make sure we couldn't find his owners. And then two, we had to make sure he was a good fit for the rest of our pets. So if you don't know, we have nine other pets. We have two dogs, another cat, three parrots, and then the three ferrets. If he didn't get along with everybody or had issues, obviously we weren't gonna be able to keep him. So we didn't wanna make that commitment until we knew for sure everything would be okay. He gets along well with the dogs. At first he was actually terrified of the dogs. And that was gonna be a concern. I didn't wanna keep him if he was gonna be completely afraid of them all the time. We think that when he got attacked by an animal that was probably a coyote or a dog, hence the reason he might've been afraid, or it could just be the natural fear that a lot of cats just have of dogs. But now he does pretty good with them. He actually tries to play with them a lot. Both dogs have been really good with him. So he tries to play with them. He really likes that both of the dog's tails are super fluffy. So I think it just reminds him of like a fluffy feathery toy. So he does like to play with their tails a lot. And as for the ferrets, I quite frankly think he wants to be a ferret. We leave our ferrets cage door open basically from morning till night. So they usually have way more than 12 hours of out of cage time and he loves going in the cage. He prefers sleeping in the cage with them. Usually when the ferrets are all sleeping, they all pile into the same hammock or the same bed together, all three boys. And I have found Loki piled in with them now. He plays with them. And our biggest concern right now is that ferrets are predators and will attack things. 
Ferrets also play kind of aggressively. If you've ever watched two ferrets play, you would think they were fighting if you didn't really understand ferret behavior. So there's been a couple times that Winky will play with him like he does the other ferrets, where Winky kind of has the upper hand right now while he is so tiny. So we do have to be a little careful of that. I don't usually recommend mixing different species like cats and ferrets, dogs and ferrets, just because there's a lot of overall observation that needs to be done just to make sure everyone is safe. And if you can't read your pet behavior very well, really bad accidents can happen. So I'm not suggesting you do this. We've interacted different species for a very long time and are always very, very careful. But yeah, after sleeping basically for two days, he's been very, very playful. As a kitten, he has so much energy. We've been taking him outside for a lot of outside walks so he can explore. The first few times we would take him outside, he was definitely nervous, didn't really want to go anywhere. So we're letting him kind of explore on his own terms so that way he can get used to being outside. We're really hoping that he can learn to love hiking and adventuring with us just like we do with the dogs, the ferrets, and the parrots. Overall, I think Loki's very happy with us. We are so happy with him. You can definitely tell he feels like home here. So yeah, that's Loki, the new addition to our family. If you're not already subscribed, definitely subscribe to the channel so you can get notified when we do more videos, which I'm sure there's gonna be quite a few cat ones. Bye!